Okay, hey y'all. We are going to, um, for my Paris Junior College class, this is going to be section 10.6, which is solving inequalities, uh, writing them in interval notation, and graphing them. So, when we solve inequalities, it's going to look a lot like an equation, but equations have equal signs. So instead of our equal sign, we will have these inequality symbols instead. And for my inequality symbols, <clears throat> goodness, it depends on how you say the inequality, like how you would actually say it in words. And those words determine which symbols we use. So if we have this symbol right here, that is saying less than, okay? And then this symbol right here, that is the symbol for greater than. So when we see that symbol, we would read it as greater than. When in our inequality, we have the symbols less than or greater than, um, we show that by using our parentheses whenever we write it in interval notation. If you see this symbol, that is read less than or equal to. If you see this symbol, that is read greater than or equal to. If you read an inequality and you say either less than or equal to, or you say greater than or equal to, when you write it in interval notation, you use brackets. Okay, so really important. <clears throat> if you think about a number line with our zero being right here, on the right hand side of the equal sign will always be positive values and so when we write our answers in interval notation, we can actually we can actually notate that or um, our answer can include the infinity symbol, which would just say that technically our x values can be any of those positive values. And if it doesn't end at a specific point, then that would imply that it goes on forever towards infinity. If you have our zero, and we're talking about any of the values to the left of a zero, those are negative values. If our inequality doesn't tell us a specific value to stop at, and it's um, going in the negative direction, when we write our answer in interval notation, we can actually notate that by writing our negative infinity. Now, just like where they fall on the number line, if we're writing interval notation and our answer is going to include a negative infinity, our negative infinity will always go on the left of our interval notation. And our positive infinity will always go on the right of our interval notation. And when you have any infinities anywhere, because infinity is not an actual numerical value that we can equal or approach really, really closely. And I'm sorry, I meant to just say equal. <laughs> I was starting to read the other side. Um, because we don't have a value that we can actually equal, all we have is a value that we can approach and get really, really close to, but never equal. What we do is we put it always near a parenthesis and so like I was saying our less than is not equal to so we use this and that would mean we use a parenthesis similar thought with our infinities we can't actually equal infinity therefore we use parentheses if you notice here that straight line means that my values can actually equal a certain um, a certain number on the number line. Okay, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, so you solve your inequality, less than, greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than or equal to, we use our parentheses, or we use our brackets. 
Um, negative infinities would always be on the left. Positive infinities would always be on the right. Okay, and so what I mean by using parentheses and using brackets, not only will we use parentheses and brackets in our interval notation, but that'll also be how we graph. Okay, so let me go ahead and do an example. <clears throat> I copied this. I have a feeling it's just going to randomly paste it in random places. Just would take a really long time to draw in this line and these, um, these notches for, you know, 10 different problems. So let's see how it works for us. Okay, so that is a number line. And um, this is just my x values. And it's showing me the values all the way to the negative 15 value. And on the right hand side, it's showing me all the way to the positive 10 value. The actual question that we're asked for question one is to, it's gonna give us an inequality and it wants us to, oh no, 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 I'm so sorry. That's why I was kind of looking at my notes and talking slow. I just wanted to make sure. Um, this, the first chunk of the homework, um, what it does is it has something already graphed and then it wants us to actually write it in um, an inequality form. Okay, so this would be our number lines actually going to be our number one. And the way that it shows us is on our number six, there is a parenthesis and then it just tells us with an arrow that it continues to go in the positive direction. So this is very poorly <laughs> drawn, but do you see how on our negative six we have a parenthesis? And then um, on our number line, it continues to go on and on and on forever and ever and ever. It actually wants us to write an inequality that says this exact thing that this number line represents. So an inequality is going to be written, inequality is going to be written in the way of, um, we have a variable, which is going to honestly be x, y'all, for I think almost every single problem on here. Um, and I would just get used to always writing x for this. Um, it's going to be a variable, an inequality symbol, and a value. Oh, and a value. <clears throat> so my variable we're gonna let's just go ahead and make it a note for this section we're always using x um i believe your homework should do the same thing hopefully pretty sure so my inequality is a variable an inequality symbol and a value so the variable that i'm going to use is x and the inequality is actually telling us all of the values that my x can be when looking at the graph that was drawn. So at my negative six, because it has a parenthesis, and I'm not gonna be able to pull this down each time y'all, so hopefully you have it written. Because there's a parenthesis, do you notice how right above parentheses, it says that the two different inequality symbols that I use are less than or greater than? So you need to keep that in mind. <clears throat> Okay, so at my negative six, I have a parenthesis. So that's gonna be either less than or greater than. But if you look, the values that are being shaded are on the right hand side of negative six, which means these values are getting larger and they're going in the positive direction, right? So that would mean that my values are greater than. So my inequality symbol would be greater than, and then the value, what I mean by that is where is my inequality symbol written? Um, not my inequality symbol, I'm sorry, where is my parenthesis 
or my bracket written, which does determine my inequality symbol. But to know which value to write, I need to know where is that parenthesis or that bracket written. It's written on negative six. So that's the answer to this problem. This, using words, states that my x values are greater than negative six. This, using a number line, states that my x values are the values greater than negative six. Okay, hopefully that made sense, y'all. Now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna paste and I'm just gonna follow wherever it goes. Okay, for the second problem, we have a number line that has a bracket on the number five, opening to the left, and then we have an arrow that's going to the left. If I write this as an inequality, the way I write inequalities is my variable, and then my inequality symbol based off of whether it's a parenthesis or a bracket. Also based off of where does it open up towards? What is it including? If I notice that my value is going to be determined by where my bracket or my parenthesis is, I can go ahead and write that value, right? Now, I wouldn't write x equals 5. That's not the section we're in. It's going to be either x is less than 5, greater than 5, less than or equal to 5, or greater than or equal to 5. There's a bracket. That means it can include the value 5. So that was when I used the less than or equal to, or I used the greater than or equal to. So now we need to look to see which way is it opening up, which values can it be. It's opening to the left. The values to the left of any number continue to get smaller, which would mean that my x values are going to be smaller than 5 or less than 5. Because it's a bracket, it can also equal 5. That would be the answer to that one, y'all. Paste here, which is near that one, but we're just going to work with it. Um, I could honestly, I don't know how to make that go away. Now, what we have is a parenthesis at negative 2, opening to the right, and then we have a bracket at 5, opening to the left, and then we have these values shaded in. Y'all, this is saying that my x value can be the number one. Actually, right here, it's a negative one. Can be the value negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, one and a half, half, three quarters, 2.7, eight, eight, all of them, every single value there. There's so many values in just that little bitty section of a line. That's why we use inequalities. And soon when I show you, that's why we'll use interval notation. If you consider these other, all of these values here that continue forever to negative infinity, there's infinitely many. There's so many. We can't list them all. That's why we do this. Okay. So this one's going to be a little different than the way we did the first ones. If you agree with me, my x values can take on all of these values, right? But that parenthesis on the left tells me it stops there. That bracket on the right tells me it stops there. Now, I see that my parenthesis on the left is touching my negative 2. I can go ahead and put my negative 2 to the left of my x variable. Now, if I look to the right of my number line, I see that there is a bracket on the value 5. I can go ahead and write my 5 here. So now we're just looking to see what inequality symbols go right here. Let's look on my number um, negative 2. I have a parenthesis, which means it cannot equal, right? I also notice that my x value 
is going to be any of these values right there, which is to the right of negative two, which means it's larger than negative two. So we would read this as X is greater than negative two. And then now let's look at my five. My X value can actually take on the values that are left of five, which means that they are less than five. Because there's a bracket, what I would have is X is blank five. X is less than or equal to five. I do that line underneath because that bracket tells me that it can also equal negative five. So that is the answer to that problem right there. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this video and then I'm gonna start another one because what we're gonna actually do is we're going to be given an inequality. So we're gonna be given this and we're actually gonna learn how to write it in interval notation. And then based off of those facts, we're gonna then graph it, okay? If y'all have questions for this, make sure you let me know, okay? Bye y'all.